59, the bottom of the page. And this is what it, it's all about. Did I go down there just a second ago? Uh, one, two. Give me up. Just had our Lisa. All right. Number 139. Everybody standing. Everybody singing. What a joy. Hey, now. Hey. Years I spent in vain. Help me. Pride carried not. My Lord was crucified. Knowing not was for me. Not on Calvary. Everybody say mercy. There was great grace was free. Hard and there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. I Hey. On the second now, ready? Ah, God's word at last, my sin I learned. Then I tremble at the law I'd spurn. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to count. Oh, sing it out, everybody! Mercy, see there was great, grace was free. Hard and there was multiplied to me. Thank God that my burdened soul found liberty. I found a free. On the third, ready to sing now. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing. Of Calvary, sing it, mercy, there was great and grace was free, hard and there was multiplied to me, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary, amen. On the last, number four, sing it together, everybody, oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down. Amen. Oh, mighty God that God did span at Calvary. Sing it out. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. All right, remain standing now and turn back to number 87. Boy, that's good singing tonight. Let's cramp it up, uh, cramp it up, amp it up, crank it up. That's a uh, cross between crank and amp. Cramp it up. Uh, number 87. Let's do this in the in the uh, kids version of this Jesus Loves Me, the traditional. I don't know how this goes really, but give me a, give me a key there. Oh, that'd be good. Number 87. This will be comforting to you tonight. Shout on this. Ready? Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible. You know, uh, a lot of people look at a little song like that. They got just some silly little old kid song. But, man, them powerful words right there, y'all. That's some powerful words. Jesus loves me. You know how I know? The Bible tells me so. Amen. Ain't got nothing to do with how you feel or you don't feel. The Bible tells you so. I'm so thankful we've got a Bible. I'm so thankful Jesus loves me. You know what's good about being in church tonight is we can renew our hope. Uh, the world don't have no hope. All they can hope for is that this situation gets better. I mean, you've got a hope beyond this. It's called the blessed hope. Hey, Amen. I'm glad we're going to leave out one day and going where the soul never dies. All right, let's get that second verse. Go ahead. Number two. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide, he will wash away my sin, let his little child come in, say, 
seated. God bless you. That's good singing. Uh, Y'all just step here. We'll do something. uh, Another song here in a minute, maybe. But it's a real blessing. Give me up just a tad uh, to see everybody out here this evening. Honestly, we got a crowd here tonight and uh, appreciate you being in church. God bless you for coming. Big crowd here this evening and thank God for that. Now, um, we're going to mention some, a few special prayer requests. I hope everybody's had a, had a, um, a good week so far. Uh, we are in an absolute, absolute crisis in, in this country, whole world. Uh, and, and, of course, we need to be, and hope I'm sure you have been, praying about the situation in this country. I'm telling you, uh, we're about that far from panic in, in this country. So uh, we're going to talk tonight about being encouraged. We're going to talk tonight about how you can be blessed and how you, you're going to feel better because you came to church tonight. I guarantee you, I already do. Just getting to see everybody and smiling. And nobody, nobody shook hands. I'm telling you, this place, this place ain't been this clean since it was brand new. Um, it, I mean, everything's been squirted, wiped. But Steve back there, he's got enough stuff to sanitize a Burke County. And he's ordered, he's actually ordered, we got them coming in a few days, those ultraviolet lights from the hallway automatically kills germs on you, just on your clothes and everything. This will be the cleanest place in the country uh, in a few days. But So uh, <laughs> I don't guess it'll hurt you. I, I ain't never used hand sanitizer in my life. Never have. Uh, have. I always, if I'm out to eat and I got barbecue on me, I take the lemon out of my glass and squirt it like that and just rub it. It does the same thing. And that's what that's for. They put that lemon in your glass for hand sanitizer. And, uh, uh, but that's that's what I've always done. I've I've always been leery of men who like to stay clean all the time, um, and I I didn't do it on purpose. I just naturally like that. But anyway, uh, uh, we're 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 doing it. We've we've squirted everybody that's come in here tonight. Um, unless you're a rebel, uh, everybody's been and everything's clean, so you're safe here tonight. We're practicing we're practicing social distance. Um, you you can't tell me that that this is more dangerous than going to Walmart. You can't tell me that. I, I don't believe it. I can prove it about it. But anyway, uh, we'll save that. But uh, we're going to pray tonight for uh, a lot of folks that are sick. Miss Sherry uh, was going to be here tonight, and her mother passed away. Um, and I'm going to give you her number, ladies, so get your pens out. Uh, her mother passed away, and they'll be having her funeral this week. And uh, uh Let's let's remember their family in prayer. Uh, she she was planning on being here at church, and I talked to her on the phone a while ago, and she took a turn for the worse uh, yesterday, and she's in a rest home, so nobody couldn't visit her. And they finally called her, and she finally got there, and it, you know it's it's not the way you'd have wanted it to be, but uh, she's gone, and her, her number is eight two eight, of course five seven eight forty three fifty seven. That's five seven eight. Four three five seven. You want to, may be really mean a lot to her. I know you can't visit. Uh, I plan on going to the. I, plan, I do plan on going to the uh, to the funeral service on Saturday. But uh, I don't know how they, how you do stuff like that. It's Ten people come to the funeral. Uh, five seven eight four three five seven. Okay. All right. Uh, well, you can. It's not against the law. But, you know, uh, y'all do what you want to. I'm going. I'll find out and let you know. Probably not. Um, let's, uh, let's remember her in prayer tonight. Also, 
a lot of folks uh, carrying them just got home a while ago. She said, we're trying, nobody's had a shower, can't get unpacked. And they was really carrying them. I was fussing. They're watching right now. So they was upset that she didn't get to come to church tonight. She had her heart set on being here. But uh, they drove all day to 3.30 this morning, stopped in Atlanta, and then they had some motor trouble, and then just got home just a little bit ago. So uh, I don't know if they're coming. I don't look for them tonight. But anyway, uh, they're back home safe, thank God. So there's 900 people that raised and, uh, they, when they all left yesterday morning because Texas don't have the laws that we have. They don't have the governor we got. But anyway, um, let's um, – let's, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, and I, I, Miss Gales had a hard time. We prayed for her Sunday, and then there was somebody else that's um, going to have. Uh, oh, guy I played ball with uh, this morning at at the wreck. Um, he uh, he's going. He was telling us about somebody that's going to have some uh, a preacher who's going to have. Who was it going to have that surgery? Somebody who's going to have some pretty serious surgery. And it's Friday morning. Who? Ray, that's right, Ray, a uh, man that plays basketball with us. Um, so um, let's remember him in prayer. It's pretty serious. And um, other people, other people, a lot of people. Got... Yeah, Brother Lee's not doing good at all, y'all. Brother Lee's been a friend of mine for many, many years. I was his pastor for years, and he pastored for years, and he's up to lung cancer. Uh, and I think he's still in Georgia, isn't he? Oh, is he in Mississippi? That's what I thought. But uh, if you've got something or somebody on your heart you'd like for us to pray for, listen, you're in good shape. If you're able to come in here tonight, you're healthy. Thank God for it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you this evening, Lord, we come thanking you for all that you've done for us. Lord, I'm thanking you that we're able to come to church tonight. I pray for all these special needs and requests. Uh, even the ones that maybe we forgot about, those that are having surgery, those that are in the hospital, those that are sick, feeling bad, whatever the need might be in every heart and life. Lord, I'm, I pray for our uh, uh, Brother Lee. Lord, that you'd touch him down there in the hospital, that you'd bless, help those doctors to know how to handle that situation. And then I pray for our country tonight, Lord, our, our leaders. Lord, those lead the CDC, the, uh, the president, the staff, the, all the people in Congress, everybody will know what to do. Lord, during this time of crises, I pray for all the other countries in the world, especially Italy and Spain and China, places like that. Oh, God, Lord, somehow, somehow bring revival. Lord, somehow bring revival. God, we know that we're here tonight praying that's the answer. You said if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and he'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Oh, God, help us as a country to turn to you with all of our heart. Now, Lord, do what ought to be done here this evening. Bless every single person that's here. Meet the need of every heart and life, and we'll thank you for what you do. We love you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray for you, say, amen. All right, right quickly, uh, we uh, I want to mention the schedule for the weekend. As of now, our schedule is still the same. You that volunteered to come at 10 o'clock, we're going to have uh, 100 at 10, 111. I've got 300 people. We have 100 at 10, 111, 100 layout. And so uh, that's, uh, you know, people just come occasionally or visitors or something like that. And that's the plan. And we're, we're, we've checked. We are in no trouble for this. Um, it has been cleared and the church will be cleaned and sanitized and everybody walks in the door will get it just like you got it here uh, this evening. I don't, if somebody don't want to come or afraid to come, that's fine. I don't judge them. Don't, don't, don't think you're more spiritual than somebody. It's not, don't make you a bit more spiritual. Uh, just pray. Uh, and if you want to come, we'll be here by the help of the Lord. We are going to visit Saturday. We will be visiting Saturday. And I think, I think it's the best time ever to visit. Now, we're not going to shake hands. We're not going to go in people's houses. Um, uh, the sermon that I preached Sunday morning, somebody just told me a minute ago about somebody listening to it. That thing has been viewed by almost 2,500 people in two days. I mean, it's everywhere. Everybody's talking about what's going on. 
and it's an evangelistic tool. So if you guys, I was going to mention it to you, Andy, and you, I didn't get to talk to you before church. If you can make us up a bunch of them, just CDs, just CDs. Take them and give them out. We can put them in the stores, put a little sack on them, a little sign, coronavirus message, and everybody will listen to them. We'll take them Saturday and give out on visitation. Say, so here, listen to this. CD, put it in CD player. Uh, so don't don't forget, yeah, it's been on the radio, but uh, most people would never listen to AM radio. So let's let's get a stack of them if you can, Andy. Just start making up some, and um, I'm gonna talk about that tonight. I'm gonna talk about making the best out of a bad situation, and the and the title of the sermon is "When Life Gives You Lemon, Make Lemonade." Amen. So uh, let's uh, enjoy the Lord this evening and uh, be blessed. We're not gonna have a regular time of fellowship. You're you're welcome to stand and do the bump. So let's stand right now, and ushers come on right quick. Everybody, let's get ready to give this evening. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I hate to even mention this because people think, yeah, them preachers. Want, but I don't know how many people have asked me about how to give when they're not here. And, and I don't know. So have somebody come pick it up, drop it off here. We'll, uh, it's post office for all you people that's watching online. There's thousands of people that watch these services. It's post office box 177, Nebo, North Carolina, 28761. That's post office box 177. For all you people, church, you know, want to help during this time, uh, that'd be great. And everybody, because, you know, if, if, if people don't work, that $1,000 check ain't going to go real far. That'd get most families through maybe a week. Then what? Uh, well, ain't no telling what we're liable to see. So, uh, but if you, I know one thing. I've always put the Lord's money first. I'm trying to do that now, and you'll never go wrong doing that. So uh, let's all give tonight, honor the Lord. I appreciate y'all being here. It's an encouragement. I don't think bad of you for if you didn't want to come. I would not, honestly, but I'm glad you're here. God bless you. Let's let's pray. Father, thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Thank you. The doors are open, shining like Baptist Church, and I pray that you keep these doors open. We ask it in Jesus' name. I pray for those that are sick tonight, not able to get out or couldn't come. I pray that you'd bless them. Those that are watching online, I pray you bless them. God, do what ought to be done here this evening. Bless this offering. Let it be what you want it to be. In Jesus' name, amen. from the CDC is now coming in. Um, she got them gloves off. I mean, if you take this glove off, I don't know how you're going to get the germs. How you going, if you take this, you, if you stick, if you can stick your finger down in there, that germ went down in there. You're dead. You're, you're done. Yeah. You can't hide from something that little. Uh, Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. You take your finger down in there, that germ's down in there. <laughs> Everything that comes in your house. If you if you have if you go to Walmart, turn me down, please. If you go to Walmart and pick up your groceries, them bags have been handled. The guy that put that on the shelf that morning, a few hours ago, they handled that bread, handle that milk, and it goes right in your house. We don't give you no bags to take out of here. We ain't giving you loading up stuff in your car. Much safer. This is much safer. That woman that checks you out, she's been touching that filthy lucre, that money. That's the nastiest thing they are, money. <laughs> that's about as dirty as Bill Maher's mouth. And, and you know, that's, you take that money, that's nasty. And she touched the last person, the last person, the last person, and then yours. Mm, I don't believe I'd change that if I was you. Better learn how to shoot them squirrels. I'm, I'm joking, but I'm trying to make you encouraged. You know, uh, uh, don't panic. Don't panic. 
I think some good advice would be, and I'm going to give this to you before we quit tonight. Some good advice I would give you was quit watching the news so much. I mean, you know what's going on. I turn it on just to check. But I caught myself the other day, ever, ever, ever on the hour, on the hour, I'd turn it on. I'd turn on two or three different channels. What are they saying? What are they saying? What are they saying? What are they saying? And you know what? I woke up in the middle of the night. I woke up in the middle of the night. I said, coronavirus. It was the first thing. I didn't think about Jesus when I woke up. I thought about the coronavirus. So I think we, we might not should spend so much time. You know what you can do, what you can't do, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. World blows up, you'll find out about it. And just limit your time with the news. Don't just be a, a fanatic. Um, it, it'll, it'll mess up your thinking. You'll be, uh, now, uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to look at Romans 8, 28, try to encourage you this evening. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 28 here tonight. The kids are not having their class tonight. Uh, so, um, they'll stay in here. Romans 8, 28, and we'll look here at verse 28. And we know all things. That did not say everything except the coronavirus. It didn't say everything but sickness or death or trouble or problem. All things, all. You know what all means in Greek? All. You know what it means in Hebrew? Every bit of it. All things work together for good to them that love God. It didn't say everything that happened to you is good. It said everything works together for good. To them that love God. You love God tonight? Say amen. amen. All right, everything's going to work together for good. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, uh, look at verse down there at verse number 38. 38. For I am persuaded. He said, my mind's made up. This is settled. I'm, this is done deal. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present virus nor things to come no telling what uh, nor height nor depth shall, nor any other creature that includes a devil demons powers shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus I want to I want to uh, I want to preach a little bit. I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to teach. I won't preach tonight on being positive in a pandemic. Being positive in a pandemic. Me and you don't have a sad song to sing. Me and you, as God's people on this earth, do not have to walk around with doom and gloom on our mind all the time. Our hope isn't in the stock market. You know, thank God it ain't. You better hope yours ain't. Now, it may crash. We don't know what's going to happen between now and Sunday. It's right now at the lowest point it's been in three over three years. And my hope wasn't in the stock market to start with. I don't want it to go bad. I don't want people to lose their jobs. I don't want the economy to come to a grinding halt. But that is a very, very good possibility. Now, me and you, you know, when the stock market crashed the first time back in 1929, there were, they said there's men standing in line on top of them buildings in New York waiting to jump off. Their whole life was wrapped up in that, their stocks, their money. And when that's gone, their life's gone. Ours ain't like that. Ours ain't like that. Our, our hope never was in this to start with. Amen? You got to make a living. You got to work. If you got money and you make good, praise God for it. But brother, that ain't where our hope is. Our hope is in the Lord and him coming back in the next world, that up world up yonder, not down here in this world. Now, we'll do the best we can while we're down here, but we're going to, we're uh, the positive outlook. Like I said a minute ago, when the world gives you a lemon, make lemonade. When the, when the world gives the church, like I was talking about putting them CDs out, take advantage of a, of a, of a bad situation. Now, what I want to do tonight is I'm going to give you a little advice on how to stay positive in a pandemic since I was so negative Sunday and give you both sides. You got to have both sides. Uh, I'll give you a little positive things about this pandemic and how you could do it. Number one, number one, uh, this is a great opportunity for everybody to have some family time. Amen. It really is. What a blessing. 
It's a shame it had to come to the, the, this. This is the way it had to come. But did you know that it, uh, that you know that the average family spends absolutely no time together anymore? Daddy's going here, mama's going here, the kids here, this schedule, that schedule. This one's got a ball game there. This one's got cheerleading here. This one's got a second shift. This one first shift. And this one has after school activities. And this one has a field trip. And this, and our lives get so busy, we just pass each other coming in and out and saying, hey, hope you have a good day. And so this is a tremendous time for families to spend. Uh, have, have a meal together, breakfast. Uh, if you're not fasting, uh, uh, our fast is still going on, by the way. And we'll talk about youth right later. But um, uh, meals, it, it's, it might have been a long time since your whole family sat down and had a meal together. It's, it's almost like a thing of the past. Everybody eats on their own schedule. Kids come in late and get pizza and throw it in the oven. Daddy, he, he's gone off somewhere. Mama's working. You know, the kids, it, this is a tremendous time to spend family time. Daddy ain't sitting there glued watching football. He ain't no football. I mean, unless it's reruns. You already know who's going. You and your tire watch that same game over and over and over and over and over. Listen, uh, I, 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 you don't know me. I love basketball, man. I, I think basketball is the best game in the world. It's the only game that makes sense that you can use all your talents and abilities. And I will debate that later. Uh, I know some people believe football and baseball. I don't see how golf, uh, whatever. But anyway, um, uh, I like basketball, but it ain't killing me not to watch a ball game. You have one my God start with. Now, if I got to where I couldn't play, that would bother me. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't care about not watching. I like to watch it. But I'm not sitting at home going into DTs, withdrawals. I heard somebody on TV saying they're having football withdrawals. You know, people make a God out of sports. I mean, when you got your car special painted Carolina blue, you know, and that's the color of your house. And people do that. People do that. People paint their house colors on and put all over the walls. And their kids grow up idolizing sports figures. Kids should not, that should not be their hero. Sports figures. Um, it, it, get, get some family time back. Family values, right? Uh, I, I made up my mind. I told Kelly the other day, we're, we're going to work on this. The kids are home. Uh, uh, the day, evening, we're going to try to have some time where they learn scripture. Uh, we're going to learn, take advantage of this time. Put the word of God in her heart. Uh, what, uh, Wes over, he's got all kinds of Christian DVDs and and he was talking about that pure flicks thing. I don't know what it is, but it's supposed to have Christian movies uh, that you could watch. I, I don't trust anything that comes out of Hollywood, but it might, some of it's probably pretty good. And uh, and let, watch Christian DVDs and, and uh, put the word of God. You know what we done yesterday? You know what we done yesterday? We took a walk. Me and Frankie and Marty took a walk up in the woods. I said, let's go for a walk. And she, we grabbed Frankie by one hand. She grabbed him by the other. And we had to just pull him over logs and stuff like that. We walked up the woods, walked around. I got 27 acres of woods. And you can walk forever down around trails and up the mountain. We're, we're making the four-wheeler trails up through there. And um, just got a new battery for four-wheeler today. And we're going to get it out tomorrow, Lord willing, tomorrow evening and, and ride it. But we got work to do and we got place to go and I got visiting to do. And I got to re preach revival next week down in Randleman, North Carolina. And so I got to get uh, ready for that. That starts Monday evening. And we we use this time to say, hey, I'm going to take them to revival with me. They can go every night now. Since I had school, we walked up through the woods. We said, look, Frank, look, Frank, look. Man, he loved it. He absolutely, I ain't never seen a kid like to get outside better than, than him. He, he, every day he said, I'm outside, outside, I'm outside. And I have to say, Frankie, I'll be back in a little while. He begs to go with anybody going out the door. And this is a great time. If this hadn't happened, we wouldn't have done that. I'd been going here, they'd been going there, homework, this, that. So what? instead of sitting around in doom and gloom, sitting, feeling sorry for yourself, saying the sky's falling, take advantage of this time. Spend some time with your family. Spend some time in family time. They fish. I don't know if I can bring myself to that. Ethan down there, they caught him. Frankie caught one that long. Uh, you know, pump, we had to drain the pond a couple of years ago because it had a leak in the pipe and... Uh, we drained it and filled it back up, and I went and bought $300 worth of fish, and I thought ducks and turtles eat them all. I thought, we ain't caught no fish, and I'm mad. But sure enough, 
There's some nice ones in there now. He caught a bass about like that. And uh, him and Frankie and all that, uh, you know, take you, take you boys fishing. I'm telling I'm not practicing what I preach right there. I, 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 I just, I don't know if I could stand to sit there and do this. Can you imagine me doing that? Okay, fish. I'll jump down in there and get you. <laughs> That's what I'd want to do. Now, there's a professional fisherman right there. I don't know if he can tell us, what do you get out of that? Yeah. You know, man, that's a conquer. Man wants to conquer. Man's an achiever. It's inside of us. It's inside of a man to want to achieve something. It's built in us. So maybe that's, maybe you get, I guess some people don't know I like basketball, but Lord, I can eat them now. I like to eat them. I love fish. I love cat, freshwater cat. Best thing, best there is to me. But anyway, uh, spend some time together. Go fishing. Go. Uh, um, take a walk. Take a picnic. It's tomorrow's first day of spring. It's supposed to be 70-something 70, 70 degrees tomorrow. Uh, have a picnic. Do something like that. Number two. I've already said this. Number two. This is a great time for kids to learn. This is a great time for kids to learn. One of the things about not going to church, uh, I mean, all most church, a lot of the churches are saying, we're just going to do it all online, everybody online. You forget that uh, one half of the congregation don't go online. All the bus kids don't go online. This, and the ones that know how don't know how to get, and they're not going to sit, they're not going to get their Sunday school class. They're not going to learn their Bible verse for the week. They're not going to learn a song if they're not in a building. Now, we're going to, we can let the Sunday school teachers broadcast, I guess. How many kids are going to sit there the whole time? They're running in there in the house. My mom and daddy's eating, talking, watching the service. That, that's better than nothing. That's better than nothing. But it ain't like being here. It ain't like being here. So let the kids learn. Learn Bible verses. Marty learned a Bible verse yesterday. What was it, Marty? You remember it? Done forgot it. Pro Proverbs 4. Say it. Got it. Amen. Did you hear that? Shining lights in that verse. Proverbs 4.18. Now, while you got them home, everybody's homeschooling. Nothing wrong with that. I, I, Who would ever thought that? Uh, one, one person said, I'm going to blow my brains out if I don't get rid of them. But, but you know what? Take, make your kids say, all right. I guess you have to take them to the school and pick up the work. Isn't that the way most, most of them doing it? Is that the way they're doing it, Brother Mike? We had to take Ethan to the high school and get his. I guess we're not advanced. <laughs> Marion, but, but uh, they, we had to go get theirs, and they're doing homework at home, supposedly. Uh, they're going to be geniuses after this year, I promise you. Again, they're talking about school may not go back till January 2021. That's the talk right now. Let's hope. Yes, sir. That's that's talk. Have you heard that? Yeah. I, yeah. Beginning of next. Could be. That's just a could. That's a maybe. That is not sure. It may, be, but they're probably done for this year. Probably. Don't know about that for sure. Anyway, um, uh, take them off. Let the kids learn some. Learn the books of the Bible. So, hey, kids, we're going to learn the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, jo Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, Chron Kings, Chronicles, right on through. Uh, we're going to learn the books of the Bible. Take advantage. Set them down and say, all right, look, we're going to learn some books of the Bible. Train them. Don't just say, get in there and watch TV and get out of my hair. And you sit and look at your phone the whole time. Uh, take advantage of this change to... to uh, I think Ethan and Molly watched that uh, Tribulation movie last night. Buddy, that'll scare the devil out of you. And they all need to see that. They all need to see that and get the devil scared out of them. Um, uh, that's right. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, so teach them. Teach them. Amen? Teach them. Number three. Ready? Especially for the ladies. Learn how to cook. It's time to learn how to cook. I know some people that go to our church will starve to death in another week and a half if they don't learn something real quick because they never eat a meal at home. 
Learn how to cook. Lord, these girls, young ladies now, they couldn't boil water without, without, without messing it up. Learn how to cook. Get you a recipe. I'm C-O-O-K. <laughs> cook food. Many, many people forgot or never did learn. Uh, you know, they say, they say the, the grocery stores over here, there's no meat today. I learned how to kill them squirrels. Um, uh, there's no meat. There's no uh, bread. And hopefully that will come back. Um, uh, the, the governor of, of uh, New York today declared they got a mess. They got a mess and it's fixing to get really worse because all the employers can only have half their employees there. If you got 500 employees, only 250 can be at work at any given time. So you're fixing to see some bad stuff. We get, we'll have anarchy in the streets, brother, before this is over with, if we don't turn the corner, hopefully, pretty soon. And I don't, that would be way worse than the sickness itself. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, cook. Learn how to cook. Uh, cooking is a skill. The world makes you think, these stay-at-home mom, all these want to know how to cook, what a failure. Listen, that's a skill. I thank God for good cooks. We got some in our church. Thank God for girls that know how to cook, or men, either one. Uh, me, anybody, learn how to cook. Teach your kids how to, let your kids learn how to scramble an egg, man. I don't want you to raise your hand. How many of you kids in here know how to scramble an egg? Don't raise your hand. You know, that's good. That's good. One thing about Americans, we ain't going to starve to death. Uh, but uh, anyway, learn how to cook. Uh, look at the advantages of cooking at home. It's healthier. Because you don't get that old grease used over and over and over and over and over and over in over a restaurant. It's uh, cheaper, right? You save money like crazy. I know people say I can eat out just now. That may be true of one person, or maybe, two, but if you got a family, it ain't true. You got kid, family and kids, it ain't cheaper to eat out. And you can you can buy stuff like stuff to can green beans and stuff, putting her in a cabinet and stuff you can freeze that will last for a long time and get. You can get a lot of meals out of what you was. And some of you, some of you tonight, you was planning on going somewhere tonight. Yeah, but you can't now unless it's carry out. Um, um, learn how to cook. Get your frying pan out. Waffles, 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 waffles. Learn how to fix waffles. Biscuits. Amen. Biscuits and gravy. I heard some places you can't buy flour. Uh, biscuits and gravy, brother. That'll take you through the hard times. Yeah. Fat back. Amen. Yeah. Some, uh, somebody said that. Well, that's this old Yankee girl from up north said, what's fat back? And she said, an overweight football player. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what fat back is. I feel sorry for you. Hurry up. Hurry up. I was supposed to say, you Yeah. Hey, Amen. There's a recipe somewhere that I looked at. It's good. Sounds good, man. Beefy, cheesy goulash. I'll take some of that. Anything with beef and cheese in it, I'm in, brother. I'm in. Say amen right there. Or ham or pork chop. Or barbecue, pork chop. Uh, sounds good. I'm dying right now. Bacon, grilled cheese, sandwiches. Fix a sandwich. I, I noticed at Walmart they were, were sold out of like sausage and stuff, but they had plenty of ham. So I thought, well, I bought some ham. We went there the other night and uh, and and bought some. Learn how to cook. Learn how to cook. Get your frying pans out, ladies, and learn how to cook. <laughs> All right. Number four. Number four. Here's what you have face positive in a pandemic. Number four, it's, it'd be a great time to get some work done around the house that you wouldn't have done otherwise. Wasn't that true? Isn't that the truth? Have you ever heard it? Fix them lights. Uh, I my cars, every one of my cars needs something done to it. I always got a headlight out or a parking light out or, or something wrong or the oil needs changing or something that I wouldn't even mess with if this hadn't happened. Um, we got a mess behind my house, behind the garage right now, that um, 
carport. I don't have a garage. I got an open carport. But we got a whole bunch of junk. And tomorrow, Lord willing, sometime tomorrow evening, we're going to clean that up. And then we're going to have a ball game to house if anybody wants to come. But only 10. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anybody wants to can come. We're going to play ball tomorrow evening at my house. They stopped us from going to the gym uh, about 6 o'clock tomorrow evening after the work's done. Work all day. Do your job. Get home from work. Cook supper. Then do some exercise. You know that little doctor. Y'all Have y'all seen that little Dr. Fossey or whatever his name is? You know the little guy, Tony Antonio Fossey, the guy that's announcing with the president and all that. I mean, he's always telling everybody what what we should do and shouldn't do. You know that little guy's 79 years old and runs three miles a day? He Up until a few years ago, he was running seven miles a day. That made, I felt, huh? I thought I was leading the pack. <laughs> this guy's 79, y'all, and still he works 16 hours a day and runs three miles. Y'all see him? How many of y'all know who I'm talking about? He's a little guy, and he's smart. He's a smart little fella. He went through the AIDS thing and the Ebola and all those epidemics. He's, he's, I don't know if he's right, but he's, he sure is smart. And uh, uh, he, this guy, he takes it. He's a little Italian from New York City, and he's a smart little guy. So get you some exercise. It'd be a good time for all the families to get an exercise thing together. Put your tennis shoes on. Say, we're all going to walk a mile. Everybody in the family is going to walk a mile. Even if you have to go slow, walk back. And then or walk a half a mile. Walk a half a mile. Take the kids. Uh, get you some exercise. Uh, lay on the floor and wall around uh, or something. Richard Simmons or something. <laughs> touch your toes or touch your knees or, or do something. Move. Just make yourself move. And make yourself sweat. They say one of the strongest, one of the strongest things against catching a virus is a strong immune system and eating right and exercise. And the more you exercise, the stronger your immune system is. That don't guarantee nothing, but it sure ain't going to hurt you. Lower you fast, fast. Our fasting is continuing. The Lord didn't put that fast on our heart for nothing. Uh, the youth rally, as of now, is still on. As of now. It may not be. It may be that we have to postpone it. But we'll still have it by the help of the Lord. And and But the fasting is good anyway. The fasting is good for you either way you look at it. Especially, if there's ever been a time people need to be fasting, it's now. I mean, president right on down to the, uh, the guy on the street, the baby in the crib. This whole nation needs to be on our knees Amen. turning to God like we never have before. Ever. Lord have mercy. Uh, plant some flowers out in your yard. Do your kids even know? Do your kids even know that you put potatoes in the ground and a potato plant comes up or, or, and or plant those little things? Do they even know that? Onions? Tomatoes? Your kids don't know that. They think biscuits, you go out and pick them off a bush. Take them in, cook them. <laughs> uh, 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 who was it? Britney Spears? One of them was... What was it? She didn't know what uh, something was. What was that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Had, yeah, Jessica Simpson. Didn't know that a chicken had wings. She said, I didn't know. Or something. Not, or so, what was it? Buffalo. I didn't know buffalo had wings. That's what she said. That's that's the kind of people we got that uh, they are getting rich. She didn't know buffalo had wings. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, learn to Learn to plant a garden, brother. You you might need it before this is over with. I I know people they ain't got that they ain't got as much room as this little choir between them and the next house. And all you gotta do is plow it up, dig it up with some, put you some put you some seed tonight. You get corn, you get tomatoes. We have brother Derek here tonight. He's a he his tomatoes won a national contest. I've been according to him. You still do that? Is that why? <laughs> Is that true? He used to bring me a tomato about every summer, one or two of them. Uh, but uh, I thought you got so old you couldn't do it. No, I don't get them up north. They claim theirs are better. But where you get your tomato plants? Okay. You can go get you some tomato plants, about like 
about like that, ain't it? When you and you have to put sticks up, and and I'd have seen my daddy do that to put sticks up so they won't just fall on the ground and rot. And ki like these kids nowadays, listen, if they had to survive, good lord, it, I mean, our generation don't even know how to do that. But I know how to plant something. Don't even think like that. I guarantee you, half the kids that go in there don't even know that you do that. They just think, well, you just go to the store and get it. <laughs> That's as far as their mind goes. If you go to the store. But nothing. learn, teach your kids. I mean, we've been sowing grass. Me and Ethan, I taught him how to sow grass, how to fertilize it. <laughs> so, uh, you ain't supposed to do it this way, but we, he, we sowed the grass. We put fertilizer down, and then I took the four-wheeler and just spun around and around and around and around like that. That's a, that's a crazy way of, of getting it. That's what I've done. It works. It works. That four-wheeler just chew that dirt up. It's like a little, like a little tiller. Uh, and I just spent I was having a ball, man. And I, I really, if that's if you're watching, I appreciate I You know, you see them guys riding in motorcycles. They, they, there, was, there was 900 people at that race says that yesterday morning. And uh, Texas don't have our law. And they, they, uh, you see them riding out there, and it looks like fun just going around there. Man, I rode that four wheeler for about ten minutes, going over the humps and all like that. And everything. my arms was killing. I was wore out. I think, boy, give me a little more respect for them guys that ride them motorcycles. That's why they have to ride a bike twenty miles, like he does, stuff like that, uh, several days a week. Uh, but anyway, get out there and do that. Get out there and do that. Put get you, time to get the lawnmower out, y'all. Get the lawnmower out. I know people's already mowing the grass. Um, I, I need to see you, Brother Jim. I need to oil change uh, here in the next few days. He's done it for me last year. And um, I get get your push mower out. Get your weed eater out. Hey, I know a guy over here at the flea market on Saturdays. He's got the best deal on weed eaters you ever seen in your life. Brand new ones. Uh, four stroke or, you know, the, 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 the bigger motor than them little bitty ones. Uh, for 100 bucks, brand new. And uh, I don't know where he gets them, but he, <laughs> I, I didn't ask him. <laughs> but uh, I think one of them was mine <laughs> a couple <of> years ago. <laughs> That's awful. Ain't it? Some guy's getting catalytic converters, but he they got him the other day out from under people's car. But um, uh, you'll be healthier, you'll be happier, and uh, do it. Next thing, uh, next thing, learn how to trust God. Learn how to trust God. We've had so much, so long in this country, it's about time we learn how to trust the Lord. We sing, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. And we miss one paycheck and almost have a heart attack. The world's coming to an end. Listen, brother, if the whole thing crashes and civil war breaks out, I hope and pray nothing like that don't happen. But if it did, me and you still have a heavenly father. You say, well, God wouldn't let us starve death, would he? Well, he might. He lets people in Sudan. Now, it's a principle. I've never seen the righteous forsaken and seed breaking bread. That's a principle. But there are exceptions if a person's a martyr, if a person suffered. There are exceptions to that. But if he does, we ain't got no right to gripe. Saved our soul from hell fire, and we're going to live with him forever and ever and ever. So we ain't got no right to gripe. Now, um, so let's make the best out of this situation. Uh, let's let's in, let's enjoy the Lord. Uh, don't worry. Come to church Sunday morning. You you can't tell me you can't tell me that this is more dangerous than Walmart, who has three hundred people at any given moment, in out in out. You say, "Well, I didn't touch nothing." They're breathing, and they don't practice social distancing. Your cashier is right there. You're handing the money back. If you check yourself out, the last nasty person touched that thing. <laughs> so, so I, I, we'll go. I'm going. I'm going. But I'm going to come to church too, if the Lord will let me. If the Lord will let us, we'll keep having church as long as it is against the law. If it's against the law, we'll have home church. If they outlaw home church, we break the law. That's scriptural. Uh, but we don't, we'll cooperate with the law now. Uh, the law right now is no more than 100 people in. We're going to have 100 Sunday morning at 10, 100 people at 11. Don't believe the rumors going around about the 50 and the 10. That is not law. That's suggestions. That's why they always, when it snows, they suggest we don't have church. 
but it's our choice whether we do or not. And obviously we do. Uh, so you, this is the safest place in town out uh, in here. Uh, look at the good side. All the casinos are closed. Praise God. Hallelujah. All the bars are closed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at the good, look at the good uh, side. The clubs, the strip joints are all closed. That's what they say. I'm, I, they probably some sneaking around somewhere, I'm sure. But this would be a great time. Turn this into a blessing. Turn it into a blessing. Hey, I heard about a kid the other day at school. Carrie, tell me about this kid had a bottle of hand sanitizer and was selling it for a dollar a squirt. Squirt. That's a smart kid, and, and the poor like, he got in trouble for it. And they, I think, man, that's an entrepreneur right there, brother. I'd hire that guy if I had a business. Uh, uh, somebody, he got a business head. But now you don't do it like the other guys did. You heard about the guys in Tennessee, right? Had seventeen thousand bottles of it. They'd stocked up. And they're selling it for like fifty and sixty dollars a bottle. They got in trouble. Yeah, he donated them. All right, keep yourself out of jail. He donated them. Everybody wanted one. Now you can't do that. You can't take advantage of people. But you know what? This would be a great time. This would be a great time for Christians like us to get groceries for elderly people and take it to them. You ever thought about stuff like that? What a witness! What a testimony! They're afraid to get out. They're afraid they'll get sick. I'm old as they are. If I can, if I, I, I never thought I'd be too old. They told me I can't come to church. <laughs> Who would have thought that? But go, go to, go out here and find you some elderly people, uh, and and somebody maybe a little bit worried about getting out. Take them some groceries. I'm old. Y'all bring me groceries this week. Uh, you're gonna get a thousand dollar check. Buy me some groceries. Everybody going to get $1,000 here in a few couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what they're saying. And, and probably another one, but that ain't, that ain't a whole lot, $1,000. All right. Uh, so don't, 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 um, don't forget that. Keep these things in mind. Uh, don't watch the news except just enough to keep up with what's going on. You'll, 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 you'll ruin yourself. You'll get so depressed, you don't want to live. That's all you do is watch the news. Look to the Lord, brother. It's a good time to be saved. Amen? All right, let's stand. After you leave here tonight, everything's going to be wiped and sanitized again, although it can't live from now on Sunday. We'll just do that for people's peace of mind. Uh, and then Sunday morning, you that volunteered for the, for the first service, be here for the first service, and then... Uh, everybody else come for the pre if 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 we don't have that many come in for the preaching service, just stay for the whole thing. Uh, but um, my goodness, I'm I'm amazed at this crowd here tonight. That's 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 a, that's a crowd here this evening. What a blessing! Can't even hardly tell no difference. Thank the Lord for that. All right, let's bow our head and we'll be dismissed with prayer. Brother Mike, you dismiss us. Everybody, fellowship at a distance and have a good evening. Lord willing, we're going visiting Saturday morning at nine thirty. Get some of these CDs as you go out if, if he's got some made and uh, uh, use them for the Lord. Go ahead, Brother Mike. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness, love, and mercy and grace to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we've got a church, Father, that stands on your word, Lord. And I'm just so thankful the doors are